The folks at EA invited us down for a hands-on preview of Need for Speed Heat, and I sat down with the developers to pick their brains about everything. For this game, we wanted to go back to something which felt much more um, reminiscent of classic Need for Speed. It would give people that classic look. And anything. So, the speed card system. Obviously, there was some discussion around that and how you upgraded your car. Tell me about what's different in that regard, and what, if anything, has changed this year? Everything has changed, <laughs> so it's, we don't have any speed cars left, and uh, that's gone. 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 It's been two years since the last Need for Speed game came out, and six years since developer Ghost Games took the reins of this iconic series. Need for Speed used to be on a yearly release cycle, and it was somewhat weighed down by this regular churn, until Ghost Games flipped the script. They're now happy with the two-year cycle and the extra time that affords them to evaluate what went right and what went wrong, then make substantial changes to the formula. Just to give us more time and space to actually develop and come up with a, um, a concept and a pitch enough that is we believe in, and also prototyping and all the other st steps to just maintaining the game and looking what features we want to continue having. Uh, for my team, which is the handling and the performance upgrades, we actually went and look, uh, looked at how, what, what should we do, like going back to the drawing board. And that takes a long time to do that. So I think for, as a developer, uh, we really appreciate that time cycle because then we give us much more breathing room to actually develop a more polished game and also we can do changes that we actually want instead of like stressing out the product, so yeah. When I played the game it was running on a PS4 Pro and it was honestly looking beautiful with some of the best screen space reflections I've seen. It really reminded me of Need for Speed Underground 1 and 2 which are my favourite entries in the series. The honest impression I got from my time with the game and the developers is they've clearly learned many lessons not only from their own work over the last 6 years with Rivals, 2015 Need for Speed and Payback but also from what made the original golden era of Need for Speed so special. And that's without even mentioning the huge online shared world multiplayer style and social clan features which really makes this car based driving game feel like something completely different, especially if you've been away from the series for some time like me. So here's a deep dive into many of the new and improved features with the developers dropping some gems along the way. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Jeremy Chubb. I'm a producer at Ghost Games uh, in Sweden where we make Need for Speed. Uh, my team is responsible for the environment. Palm City is the location for the new Need for Speed game. It's called Need for Speed Heat. Um, and it was inspired by a real world location. It was inspired by Miami. For this game, we wanted to go back to something which felt much more um, reminiscent of classic Need for Speed. It would give people that classic look that they all kind of love from, I guess, 05 Most Wanted or Underground. So we wanted night, neon, wet roads, reflections, um, that whole thing. And so I guess Miami, it gave us and a location where we felt that stuff could happen. There's a place in Miami called Wynwood, which is just like a massive outdoor art gallery. It's just street art and graffiti, and it's really cool. And it really seemed to capture sort of the urban kind of vibes and the creativity that, that you know, Neve Speed fans really kind of love. Um, and so we put that into the game. And then while we were there, we just saw insane weather. We just see like blazing sunshine, tropical storm, blazing sunshine, all in the space of like 10 minutes. We were like, well, this is like, this is just like a video game. So, you know, we, we allowed the guys to create like a dynamic weather system. And so as you drive, you see those conditions change. Um, and then most of all, it obviously gave us the look that we were looking for. A place where, you know, believably you can have um, wet roads, you know, um, dry roads, all the, all the sort of night conditions, the variation that we wanted to put in there. So from a design standpoint, we really wanted to pursue um, open world police chases um, for this game that we knew that was missing from the last game and people really loved it. It's kind of a need for speed staple. So getting in chases with the cops, having the freedom and choice to go anywhere to try and lose them, um, you know, exploring an environment like loaded with tactical choices, that felt like such a powerful component that we wanted to bring back. Um, and we felt like a really strong way of doing that was to create kind of contrast between day and night. So in the daytime we introduced um, a kind of sanctioned uh, race series. So it's kind of safer, it's more leisurely paced. Um, the experience for events is pure race, 
So it's just you, um, the track design, the AI, um, and the handling. So it's a really kind of a, like a thoroughbred race experience. Um, and at night we wanted something a little bit more unpredictable and chaotic and dangerous and risky. Um, and so that's where you do illegal street racing, that's where the police will chase you, that's where you can escalate the pursuits, um, and that's where you can also escalate your level of reward. Um, and the longer you play, the more risky it is, the, chance, the chances of you losing uh, what you've earned um, kind of kicks in. And, and so we love that balance of risk-reward gameplay. So that gave us a reason to do a kind of a fixed um, day-night cycle. And so there's variation within those. There's different weather conditions, obviously a dynamic um, weather system, and there's multiple different um, daytimes. But the other thing that got the graphics guys really excited, um, and Need for Speed is sort of famously a, a game with um, your spectacular visuals, you know, stunning night visuals in particular, but you know, also day. Um, and it gave them a chance to really kind of focus their efforts on the look. Um, it was easier to do in that context. So I guess there was sort of uh, binary reasons for us wanting to do that. Hi, I'm Patrick Hanarati. I'm a producer here at Ghost UK, uh, and my team is responsible for the narrative uh, story and the characters in the game. The avatar selection as we have it, the um, inspiration really behind that was to try and give the players uh, a choice in who that character is. In the previous game, we put you uh, basically at the hands of Tyler Morgan. Um, we've kind of changed that and gone back to a bit of an old Need for Speed staple, and I think there's a reason why that formula kind of works. So when we took the decision to do that, we also wanted to um, expand that level of self-expression that we allow the players to have with vehicles, uh, and why not expand that to characters, it made sense. And we wanted to understand what was our take on that, like if we looked at contemporary fashion or we looked at where we were like two years ago, what would be good now, uh, how did we get there? So we engaged with um, N.com uh, and we talked, uh, we talked with them on partnership of uh, what are good brands to have out, what mixes well, what works well with styles that we have. And we worked with a stylist to kind of come up with what we thought were kind of 12 unique styles that are reasonably contemporary but interesting as well. And then as you go into that, we kind of riff uh, on, on that kind of idea. When it comes to the characters that you meet out in the world and what they are, effectively, as Jez was saying, we took a huge amount of inspiration from um, the Miami region. It's a very uh, Latin American focused region. Um, and so we wanted to introduce authenticity into our story and to our characters. And a lot of inspiration is born from that. So a lot of our characters come from the Latin American background. Uh, a lot of the casting we did was with a lot of Latin American um, actors, actresses. Um, effectively trying to capture that authenticity um, within the story and that's that, that's kind of how um, those characters come about. Uh, so my name is Reza Hedayati and I'm a game designer. Uh, I've been working on the vehicle performance upgrades and the vehicle handling side and also the economy of the game. Everything has changed, <laughs> so it's, we don't have any speed cars left, uh, that's gone. So that's one, one of the things we went back to the drawing board. We like we want to deliver an upgrading system to the players where they can feel that they are actually spending time on the car, they're actually building a car, or you know they are feeling like mechanics. So we want to deliver that fancy. So what we did uh, done right now is the car is divided into four categories. You have the engine, you have the chassis, you have the drivetrain, and you have the auxiliary. So engine is all about adding more horsepower, more power to the car. Chassis is about uh, tuning the handling of the car. Drivetrain is kind of a mix between handling and power. Uh, and auxiliary is these extra bonuses you can apply to the car um, that will make more your ride. Uh, so that is a big difference we have. And also we have added uh, engine swaps to the game. And engine swaps adds a new level of customization for the car. Not only that you get like a powerful engine in, into the car, you get the actual sound of the engine into that car and, and that, on top of that you can also do exhaust tuning on top of that so we're trying to add more self-expression more ways for players to exactly to create their ride like what is your dream car and you can actually do that now in need for speed heat um, so with engine swaps and with the whole new structure we have with the parts uh, i think i think players are gonna find it more enjoyable to upgrade the car and right now you unlock parts via um, just rep leveling up, like classic Need for Speed uh, 
but also the the best parts in a game you unlock them and get them via these high heat events and these are um, high heat chase cop events that you get them and if you manage to come top five you will get a part but you need to be able to escape the cops and go back to your garage but if you get busted you lose that part so that is a part of our end game and upgrading the car to later stages yeah so when a player goes to the dealership uh, they will see all the cars that are available in the game uh, some cars will be locked by certain challenges they have to do so uh, most of the cars they are unlocked by just you rep leveling up but we have put cars also behind challenges via driving stories or finished in campaign or collectibles and stuff to actually giving an extra thing for the players to do basically like um, so for instance if they complete districts they can get cars or they yeah, reach the max level of their crew they will be awarded with a car um, but also we added something new in the dealership that uh, fans really wanted was actually to see how much customization there is on a car so going through yeah exactly going through the, um, the cars you can see how much customiz customization each car has um, so that helps a player to make a decision to buy a car. See, we wanted like to give more choice and more freedom for the player to make all this. Uh, like I think Need for Speed Heat has more choice and more freedom than any other Need for Speed game before. Like you can play the entire game without touching the narrative. You can play the narrative from the start. You can play online. You can play offline. You can be in a crew. You can be out of a crew. You can build your drift car, you can build your race car, you can do like all these things and it's up to the player to decide what they want to do. I'm Danny Isaac, I'm the senior producer responsible for connected features, mainly all the social features within Need for Speed Heat. Yeah, so the crew feature uh, within Need for Speed, yeah, 32 players can go, go in and actually um, uh, we actually help the player get in there. So when you play very early on in the game, we put you into a starter crew. And the main reason we wanted to do this, we have this idea of trying to turn uh, acquaintances into friends. When we look to um, our previous titles, we see the highest engagement is from when people are friends, right? when you've got someone else to play with. But within a racing game, it's really hard to find those. You're traveling at 150, 200 miles an hour at the time. Right? Why would you stop and wait? So we've kind of built a little um, asynchronous feature called True Cruise to put people in there. Everyone gets a bonus from being in there, so you get extra uh, bonuses to the rep and bank that you get. But also with the crew trials, if you want to be a little bit more competitive, you can go and do that in a fun and friendly way. And so we're hoping that you know maybe you and I would go back and forth. We might not know each other, but then hey, he's a cool guy. Maybe friends up and keep playing or play other EA games and, and just try to bring people together in a, a friendly, uh, light, light way. I mean, bringing social, this persistent world uh, to Need for Speed, I think. Again, I think we've done it in a way, or we try to do it in a way where the players can engage at the level they want to. So if they want to just play the solo narrative campaign, they can go and do that. But if they want to hang out with their friends and, and you know, have some smack talk and just hang out with VoIP and party up and, and not even necessarily race, just drive around exploring the world doing the silliest, craziest thing they want to, that's their choice as well. And, and we want Need for Speed, as you see from the handling and, and the way the world looks and the richness of it, we want it to be a fun, playful environment for you to go into and for you, you know, for it to be your Need for Speed. Play on your terms, play with your friends uh, and crew and do those sort of things. So I think it's, we still have those traditional players who just want to play the narrative, but you know, when we look at the industry today and the opportunities we have with a connected world, you know, it's a really rich experience when we bring social into a game such as Need for Speed Heat. The game is releasing on November 8 on all platforms and Need for Speed Heat is shaping up to be one of the best releases in the series to date. Special thanks goes out to the devs for chatting with us and for more exclusive coverage on Need for Speed and much, much more. Keep it locked here on VG247.com.